I get the new kind of lights on. Okay, so really quick, um, running through. This is a defensive stick, okay? This is what uh, Coach Banks played with. This is a six foot long defensive stick. You get to use all this stick that you want to beat the crap out of your opponents with. Now you can check them on the hands, you just can't hit them in the head, you can't hit them in the back. Um, a lot of this stuff, you know, is similar to the hockey stuff. It doesn't hurt that bad to get hit. You have gloves on. Um, and as you guys saw in that game, there's a mixture of a lot of different sports that are, that are involved in this game. So those of you that, you know, think you're athletic and, and want to come out and try it, we're, we're obviously promoting it. So I'm going to turn it over really quick to uh, Coach Banks. For anyone that doesn't know, um, he's, he's around, he's from Norwalk, and he grew up around here, and lacrosse is kind of something that turned him into the man that he is today. Just just figured it was fitting for him to come down here and talk to you guys. So again, without further ado, um, we're going to introduce Mike Banks. Also, Cam, you can stand up too. Man, come on and try it. I'm 
not coming out and trying lacrosse, man. I play basketball, football. I don't mess with lacrosse, man. I don't do that hockey stuff and throwing stuff around like tennis and whatnot. That's what I mean. That's what I was saying. And so the thing that stuck with me is the fact that he was persistent. He didn't let me go. He kept nipping at me, kept nipping at me. And, and the next day he said, hey, Mike, what are you, soft? And whenever someone ever tested my emotions, I, I, was, I was very defensive. Come out and just see it. No, I'm not gonna pick up the stick. I'll come out and watch the practice. So that's what I did. That day at the end of school, I didn't, I didn't play. I didn't pick up the stick. I just stood there on the sideline, on the other side of the fence. All my homeboys were home, back to the block, and I just stood there and watched the guys throw around and hit each other with sticks. I said, Hell no. <laughs> no! These kids are hitting each other with sticks. Nah, that's not me, man. That's not me. That's the set of sound. He came over and talked over. So what you think, man? What you think? I said, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. That's not happening for me. <laughs> you wanna hit me with a stick? I'm gonna get mad. So I'm gonna tell you what, and this is what sold me. He said, This is one of the only sports where if someone hits you, you can legally hit them back. I said, What? I said, I'm say, what? If someone hits you, you go have to go after them and get them. So what he did, he actually told one of the defensemen at the time, said, Come over here, come here, come here, introduce yourself. His name was Frankie Guffman. I don't remember Frankie. Over, hey, what's up? Hey, my name's Frankie. I'm like, I'm Mike. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this dude's playing. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting talking to him. He said, hey, Frankie, give me a D stick. All right? And he passed me this thing. This this thing. Like, what, what, what's this? I'm looking at it and I'm like, doing this way. I'm like, okay, if I show up to do it. He said, just hold on to it. So imagine taking this and hitting somebody in their hands with it. I'm like, yeah, that probably hurt. It's metal. It's going to hurt. He said, well, Imagine taking what you know in basketball, defensively, sitting down, okay, keeping top side, not trying to let the guy get past you, and take what you know in football, staying low, low guy wins, driving a guy backwards, right, driving a guy into the backfield. Imagine taking those lessons you've learned in those two sports and taking them into a sport and changing the game. I thought he was just trying to give me a prep talk, so I said, all right, man. I tried, I tried throwing around with it. I gave in. So I went out there to do Frankie, and we started to pass around. I didn't know what to do. I was awkward. I had a chain of swords back on. My, my hands were scared. I didn't know what to do. I was squeezing the life out of the stick. So I started to throw the ball with him. And mind you, I'm not sure what I'm doing. He throws me a ball, and it hits me in a spot where I didn't like. So then I crunched down to the ground. I said, all right, no, 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 no. If I'm going to be getting hit with that ball, people, I said, people get hit with that ball? He's like, yeah, you get hit with the ball. What are you, what are you soft? You're knocking a man up. I said, all right. Mm. I do testing. So, right. so that day went by. I went home that day and I thought about that. I thought about the fact that this game of lacrosse I knew nothing about, I was just introduced to, and the fact that my high school I was at was pretty good at it. It still didn't click to me. I still didn't want to play the game yet. I was like, that's cool, something new. Blah, 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 blah. So the next day it came out, hey, Mike, what you think about it yesterday? Well, it, was, it was cool, whatever, you know, lacrosse. Nice. Lacrosse is famous things. You throw the ball around. Nice. <coughs> He said, I want you to just come out, watch us practice again. I want to force you to come out there and just come out there. All right, I went out there. While I was sitting out there watching, I found myself getting really bored. I wanted to be running around because it wasn't football season. I wasn't a baseball player. That's the two sports I was big in the spring at my high school. So I was sitting there watching. I'm like, yeah, I want to be out there wanting to hit people. I see kids falling on the ground, popping kids. Like, that was me. That was me playing football. And so, the coach came over to me again asked me how I'm doing. I said, I'm doing all right, man. And I, you know what? I'll try this thing. Let me go out there. So I went out there again. And make a long story short, I found myself, I was standing on that field. And I'll never forget this story. My junior year, it was, well, I stayed back in so I was like a, a sophomore. And my sophomore year, that was my first time ever playing a game. And we was, uh, I was on JV first. I'll never forget. Coach led me into a game. And I went out there, and I'm like, ooh. Good. That's what I want you to feel. 
I don't care about the penalties. I want you to have fun. Are you having fun? Yeah, man, this, this is straight, man. I'm here, kids, you know? I was just holding this thing. I just couldn't stop moving. So we're going to short. He said, no, I want you to come up to varsity. I just want you to just see how the team, how the game speed is, you know? Because at varsity level, the highest level in high school, you just come up and watch. So I went up to a varsity game, and they were beating his team like 15 to like 2. In the fourth quarter, he goes, I'm sitting at the sideline, I got these, I ain't know, I ain't know how to dress like a call. I had shorts out above my knees. I got long legs. I look awkward. So I'm sitting there on the sideline. Like, hey, Mike, thanks. Come here. Come here. I look down. Hey, varsity game, fourth quarter. Come on, go to the game, man. Go on the game. So I go out there. I forget who we were playing. But once again, I'm out there and I'm hitting on kids twice my size. Wow, railing on them. And they running away like, who's this new kid? Who's this back kid hit me with this thing? <laughs> I'm out there just going crazy. I'm excited. <coughs> and I'll never forget what he told me at the end of the game. Everyone was like, oh, cool, good job, man. So you did your thing. They're like, you know what? You got more penalties than playing time. And I did. <laughs> I got penalties all day. But what I learned after that game is that no matter what, I was having fun and I was doing something new. I was doing something that all my homeboys, all my friends was afraid to do because it was something different and it was something new. And that's what people say. You fear what you don't know. You fear what you don't know. And that's what I did. So I was like, nah, I ain't playing lacrosse, man. That's not me. Because I didn't know it. How do I know something about formula unless I tried it? So that's what I did. I tried it and I took advantage of it. And after that day, ever since he told me that, ever since he told me that, this is the only sport where you can hit somebody legally hit them back, and I was getting more penalty in playing time, I said, you know, I'm going to try this thing. And some of these, in kicked my head. Every day I was on that wall, right behind the school wall ball. Boom. 25 left, 25 right. I'm a lefty, all right? So I was going to work on my offhand. I didn't know what, I heard nothing about college. I had a .9 GPA. <laughs> .9 GPA. You don't have to, you blink your eye, you get a point .9 GPA. <laughs> you can sneeze and get a .9 GPA. That's how bad I was in school. All right? I found myself. Instead of selling drugs on the corner, what would have you, I was, I was, I was doing war ball. Do, do, do. Doing mm -hmm. war ball and going to church. Doing war ball and going to church. That's what I was doing. All right? Started getting my life right. But I didn't know I was getting my life right because I was just, I was deterring my, my wrong path by playing with Trump. So I was doing more wall, lefty, right. After that, I just ended up getting to get out the sport real quick. By my junior year, I was my full flesh, full year of playing lacrosse. I got, I think it's out of my mentor, I'm American, and I moved up to varsity. But by my second year of playing the sport, I got all American. I don't know how, I don't know why. The only thing I do know why is that I was determined. And I was determined that this was going to be the tool that was going to bring me to the next level. I just, I, at this point, I still didn't know anything about college. I still didn't know anything about recruiting. I didn't know anything about looking at college. I didn't know anything about college looking at you. It wasn't until towards the, towards the end of my uh, senior year in high school when my high school coach was like, you got a bunch of schools looking at you, man. What are you going to do? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, well, you need to get your grades right. So we can also say, sure, I went from a .9 GPA to a PO, to a PO in a year. I, I, went, ham, I went ham on the homework. I had to go in. I said, listen, man, if this is going to be a future for you, I was looking at my past to get at my family history, not knowing that my family went to college. I said, I'm going to be the first to do it. I'm going to be the first to overcome something that a lot of people will tell you, that society will tell you that you can't do because of certain things society has set up. So I say, no, I'm going to overcome it. But I'm going to prove that wrong. And that's what I was destined to do. To make a long story short, I got looked at by Drexel, by UMass, by St. John's, <coughs> Albany, and a couple other colleges. And I boiled it down to Drexel in Philadelphia. And it was out of Drexel and Albany in Albany, New York, where I'm at now. To make a long story short, I went up to go, went, went up to go see both schools. I went down to Philly, had a good time. And, oh, this, this college life is crazy, man. These kids are oh, man. I just, you know, I ain't going to say all those stories, but I had a good time. <laughs> and I went up to Albany, and first, first, before I went up to Albany, I didn't know Albany was the capital of New York. I'm from Connecticut, so I didn't know. Only, the only thing you know about in Stanford is New York City, because it's right next door. So, went up there, met the coach. He said, you, 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 suppose you heard about my story and everything. He said, hey, I heard you turn your life around, man. 
you know, and all that stuff. And I would love for you to be in the team, pat me on the back, give me a hug. And I just felt at home up there. And, and I got to know him a little more. He kept contacting me and sticking with me. And he told me one thing. He said, because I was the only black kid on the team. I was. I didn't look at that as a, as a, as a negative. I looked at it as a positive. So I'm doing something different. And what he told me, he said, I'll tell you right now, we're looking at giving you a full scholarship, man. I said, what? I ain't going to make a full. Full what? What does that mean? I went back to my college and said, man, they're going to pay for your whole college career. Y'all know how much college it, it costs. That's a lot of money for those of y'all that are applying for colleges right now. And so I thought about it. I mapped it out. I said, my competition for playing basketball and getting to college, mm, it's not much competition because I wasn't like a D1 basketball player. I ain't going to lie. All right? Football, competition, there's a lot of competition because a lot of kids that look like me, that's athletic like me, that's as big as me, and that can do probably even a little better than me. All right? So I said, ain't that much competition for the cross. I was somehow dominating. I didn't know why. I just, I was just loving having fun playing the game. So that was, that, that's what pulled me in. So I went up to Albany, and the long story even shorter, um, got a full ride to play lacrosse with me. And that was the best four years of my life. It was playing D1 lacrosse, playing, as, 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 playing against Syracuse every year in the dome. And a lot of you cross players know about these big, big schools, playing against John Hopkins, playing against Paul Rabel, all of those guys. All right, going up to the Reds, the Native uh, Reservation, playing with those Natives up there, having fun with those guys, building a camaraderie with these guys. And it all started, and it all started, it all started on the football field. It all started on the basketball field. And all those fundamentals that I learned playing those sports led me here. And like my man said, who left, I wish I started playing at a young age. I wish, because I would have probably been a little better. But I wish I started playing young games. And I ended up my sophomore year getting an honorable mention All-American and got injured a little shortly after. I ended up getting actual All-American. But I had uh, four, uh, the best four years of my life. And I would encourage any young man in here to try it out. To try to sport out, just like how I did. Because I was one of you guys. I know some of you guys are even in here. That ain't me. It ain't my thing. It's like hockey. It's, uh, I, you know, it's a white boy sport or whatnot. You put racer. I had nothing to do with it. It's, it's, Color your skin has nothing to do with a daggone sport or how you can perform. It's what you bring to the table. And that's what matters the game. And that's my really, really short version of <laughs> Similar to, um, you know, NCAA magazine or you know any of the ESPN magazines, uh, he was featured on the cover, and this tells his whole story. It's a nice long article. I'll give that to you guys to go home. Um, for the guys that that don't play already, I want you to take take one of these sheets, pass them around. Uh, a little bit of information on our program, what we do. Take one of those. I'll go through that. I'll explain that. Um, and then secondly, we'll talk about the gear, and then thirdly, we'll, we'll get you guys out of here. Um, so pass one of those papers around. Uh, varsity football players, uh, varsity guys only, so Hunter, Taekwon, whatever you guys can go, do your thing, get paid for this time. Um, good luck tonight, I'll see you guys in the game. Here we have a list of things. First off, it's going to improve your athletic ability. 
if football is your number one sport, if basketball is your number one sport, lacrosse is going to make that better. When we practice, we get after it, we have fun, there's not a lot of walkthroughs in practice. Um, you know, all our guys that sit back there in the back, they're all players on the team. We get after it every day when we go out to practice. We do footwork, we do speed drills, we do hitting drills. Um, you know, one-on-ones, two-on-twos, three-on-twos, all that stuff. It's fast-paced, it's fun, it's not necessarily no offense to football practice. It's not like a football practice where you go there and walk through stuff and go over X's and O's. You go there, you're out there every day, you play a lot. Play about three games a week. Season's real short, two months, okay? You're out there in March, you're done by May. Um, you know, it, it, you're playing two, three games a week, it's an awesome time. We will have, assuming that a lot of you guys are going to play this year, for the first time ever in Stanford High School history, we're going to have a freshman lacrosse team. We've built you guys a 10-game schedule. Uh, we have 10 sets of pads for a select few guys that we know can't necessarily afford the pads right now. Um, we also have a team store that we're going to open up for you guys where you can go on it for about $200. You can get every piece of gear that you need for the game of lacrosse that will last you all your high school career. Okay? That's one pair of shoes that you guys buy. That's one outfit that you guys buy. Save up some money, spend the money, invest in your future, buy yourself some gear. Secondly, it's an easy game to learn, especially if you're an athlete. It's a unique experience that you guys will obviously gain a lot of friendship from. You get that camaraderie, you'll be part of another team, and it'll help keep your grades up for the rest of the sports you're playing. Um, on this bottom part, it says, don't look back as a junior or a sophomore and say, oh man, I wish I played lacrosse when I was a freshman. Because I'm telling you right now, are there any guys on the varsity team or any guys that wish they started playing when they were younger? Raise your hand. Okay? Everyone. Everyone that plays this game. I started playing the game in eighth grade. Okay? I played against Banks in high school. He teased me up. I was five foot three. And I was one of those dudes that was like, yo, who is this new guy on the command ripping me up? Okay? I was small. I wish I played when I was younger. But guess what? I was able to excel and play college lacrosse as well because there's a spot on the field for everybody. If you're slow, you can be a catch and shoot guy. If you're fast, all you need to do is play defense. If you're elusive and you're real quick with your feet, you're going to be a dodger. There's a spot for everybody on the field. Our workout schedule in the off season, what we have right now is we lift in the weight room as a team with a strength and conditioning coach Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. So you football guys that are going to be a part of it, you want to get stronger for football, guess what? Come work out with us, play with us in the spring anyway. You guys are getting stronger as is. Our season begins in March, um, and this bottom part set has a website. Okay, I'm going to pass around, for those of you that, that don't have gear, Okay, I'm going to pass around. We have a team store that is online. Okay? You log on and you go on lax.com slash team sales. Our team number is 175 and the name of our team obviously is Stanford. For 200 bucks, you get every single thing on here. That's a helmet, a stick, gloves, arm pads, and shoulder pads. There's no better deal than that. Okay? Lacrosse is an expensive sport. I'm good friends with the guy that works at lax.com. You can take this flyer, you can buy this stuff online, it'll be shipped right to your doorstep within a week. Okay? Um, any freshman on the freshman football team already bought their equipment. I know there's one. Okay? Two. Yeah, okay, Gabe. Okay? Sam Philandra already bought his equipment, he's playing. John Cola already has equipment, hopefully he's playing as soon as he keeps his grades up. Um, Hogan's I don't want to play. Um, CJ said he might want to play. We have some sophomores that want to play. I'm gonna pass around, I'm gonna pass around this stuff. This is your team store information. Pass that up. Here. Okay? We got New Jersey's this year for the varsity. 
jersey. These were our home jerseys last year. These are shorts, just, just like a pair of basketball <laughs> shorts. Right? These are our home jerseys. They're real lightweight. Okay? You guys can pass them around. Look at those. Um, these are our helmets. Again, helmets are real lightweight. Um, they're not like a football helmet. Okay? I'm going to pass this around. These are our Stanford varsity helmets. Okay? You guys pass those around. Take a look at those. We have a defensive stick. You guys can pass this around to freshmen. Look at this. Maybe you want to hit some people. We have a short stick. This is for these, these offensive players. Okay? These are those guys that want to cross some people up, score some goals. Thank you. 
for them their black tops with orange shorts. So we have some custom away jerseys for this year. Uh, some new additions that we're doing to the varsity program um, that hopefully some of you guys will be involved in in the near future. We used to play West Hills um, on like our second or third game.